2008 से लेकर जस्टिस के जी बालाकृष्णन के बेंच से लेकर जस्टिस रविंद्रन के बेंच जस्टिस सुदर्शन रेड्डी कई अन्य जजेस के बेंचों ने बोला है कि छत्तीसगढ़ की पुलिस ने सलवाजुडूम के जो अटैक्स हैं सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस के अटैक्स हैं उस पर एफआईआर दर्ज नहीं किया है विक्टिम्स को कॉम्पेंसेशन नहीं किया है और ये छत्तीसगढ़ पुलिस is so unreliable, uh, the bench of Justice uh, Reddy and uh, Justice Nijar said, the Chhattisgarh government is so unreliable that we cannot trust any affidavit filed by the Chhattisgarh government, which is why in the Taj Mitla case, they ordered the CBI to investigate. So this police, which from 2005 onwards has not registered any FIRs, there are repeated directions from the Supreme Court about the functioning of the Chhattisgarh police. In 2022, this police is now being told that whatever they say is absolutely correct and the petitioners must be fined because they are the ones telling a false story. So this is not only a contempt of the people of Gombad and Gachanpali, a contempt of Himanshu Kumar, this is a contempt of the Supreme Court itself. Because by this judgment, what the Supreme Court bench of Justice Khanilkar and Justice Pardiwala are saying is that they have no faith in the other members of the Supreme Court, in previous benches of the Supreme Court, or in Justice um, Agarwal, who was the judicial inquiry for Sarke Goda, for Edis Mehta, or the CBI, who has found the police guilty of a number of errors in its functioning. So basically, what they're saying is that the Chhattisgarh police is perfectly correct, everybody else is wrong. So why do we need the Supreme Court? Why do we need the Supreme Court to have, for people to have struggled all these years if the police was fine and there was nothing more to be said? I want you to just, I just want to remind you of some of the events and I know uh, Himanshu ji will talk about this. But Sada Jibun started in 2005, from 2005 to 2007 they went around security forces and armed youth who the police had liberally distributed arms, they went around burning villages, killing people, raping uh, women. By official uh, sources, 644 villages were affected. From 2009, they started Operation Green Hunt because by now they no longer needed the, un, the unofficial salvage room, so it was entirely conducted by security forces. So in 2009, from the summer of 2009, we saw a whole wave of killings both in Bijapur and in the Konta area. And these are, I just want to read from my field notes of 2009, just about the Konta area. This is what resulted in the Gompad petition, which uh, Himanshu Kumar filed. Now please remember today is a rainy day and when the judges talk about how these are rustic tribals misled by Himanshu Kumar, we are talking about a situation where it's hard to cross you know, the roads here. We're talking about villages which are cut off by streams through the rain. And yet they came all the way to file their petition uh, you know, to ask for the case to be taken to the Supreme Court. They came despite the fact that nine people had been killed in the village, that they had run away to Andhra. To, uh, one small child, uh, this Kattam Suresh, had been taken away by his eight-year-old aunt and uh, finally you know, reunited with his father. We're talking about people who are living in a state of terror in the forest around their village who have fled to Andhra Pradesh and yet they have the courage, the desire to make the Supreme Court to make somebody hear what has happened to them. So I just want to describe to you what happened exactly in those months. We're talking of September, October 2009, uh, when uh, on 17 September, three CRPF parties set off from Konta in Jiram. And these are all facts that not only has Himanshu Kumar substantiated in the petition, not only have the villagers themselves, but journalists published in the Hindu at that time. Aman Sethi had published several stories. Javed Iqbal had published several stories. So we have a lot of corroborative evidence from the media at that time. I also want to note before I just describe this, how if you just look at the Supreme Court judgment of 2022 itself, the first petitioner, uh, the first FIR in this case was registered by Mataram Bhartahari, I think his name is, the uh, SHO in charge of uh, 
the Chinta Gufa, uh, I think Chinta Gufa or the, uh, another Thana, uh, one of the Thanas where the case was registered. So this was in uh, 2009, October, and there was no mention of anybody being killed, right? So the police registered an FIR, just say that, you know, there was an encounter. The only, the time when the mention of people being killed is when Soyam Rama, who is the first petitioner uh, who filed the FIR, he mentions that uh, so many people were killed in the village. And yet, the complainant in that case is this Matar, uh, Mataram Bhartihari. So then they say, but the complainant had nothing to say. And so therefore, so young Rama. So this happens in case after case. In Taj Mehta, again, we have had exactly the same experience because the police registered an FIR which was completely false. When we registered, an, we asked for another FIR to be registered saying uh, that so many people have been killed. They are made the complainant, so they are the ones who can go ahead with the case and we have no local standard at all. So the law matters and they misuse the law in every way possible. So just to get back to, um, on 17 September, three CRPF uh, parties set off from Konta. Uh, they were supposed to converge at uh, Singan Madhu, where there was supposed to be a Maoist gun making factory. Uh, there was Marvi Deva had gone to get selfie. Selfie is like an alcoholic drink from a tree, a sego palm tree. Uh, it's like toddy. So he met this force on the way. He was terrified because, you know, you see a big force coming. He could do nothing, so they shot him. Uh, his head was smashed in. After this, there was an encounter. Security forces say they were surrounded by Naxals, uh, etc. The next day, the force attacked Gachanpali village in the morning. Uh, people were just getting up. Now, please remember, in villages, people get up around 5. The force always attacks around 4.35. People were just getting up. Uh, there was an old woman, uh, Dudhi Muye, who, and you know, this uh, uh, Sony Sony described the sheer brutality. It's the casualness. So, uh, 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 Muye, uh, Dudhi Muye was old. She could not move. So they casually hacked her breast with an axe. All of this is just casual. Otherwise, it don't matter. You can just casually kill them because it's all in a day's work. They caught hold of two people, Marvi Hadma, Madkam Sula, tied them up with a rope and brought them to the dancing ground in the village. They were hit with rifle butts and then shot in front of Sula's wife. The village had been burnt earlier in 2006, and when Duthi Muye, an old woman who was paralyzed, asked the SPOs why they were burning the huts again, they shot her and casually chopped her breasts. Two other old men were beaten and killed inside their house, Kavasi Ganga and Madvi Joga. After finishing with Gachanpali, the forces left Gattapad three kilometers away, reaching by about 10 to 11 a.m. They caught three persons sitting in their homes, Sodi Masa, Padam Deva, Dudhi Poja. They were taken away and killed. The women of the village visited Kistaram police station the next day, but got no information. Three days later, they were shown photos of Naxalites, quote unquote, by the press in Konta, and recognized their relatives by their shirts. The next major round of killing took place on October 1st. Uh, and was described to me by somebody who had been present in the village that day. She had escaped to Andhra and uh, she had recently gone back to her house in Gompa, to her husband's house, thinking that after the first wave of burnings in 2003 to six, she thought, okay, things are better, I'll go back home. And um, that morning, a force on the morning of the 1st of October, a force of about 200 CRPF and SPOs left for Gompa that night. Gompad is primarily a Dorla village, and uh, one SPO, sometimes you know the SPOs are from the area, so they will, they informed the village that they were coming, they told, uh, the, you know, they gave the wrong direction, so the SPOs, instead of reaching at night, they reached at 5.30 in the morning, so, which is why a lot of people had managed to run away. However, there was one family, um, Madhvi Bajare, about 40 years old, was ill, so he could not escape, and his wife, Madhvi Subi, was also with him when the forces arrived. Their elder daughter, Katam Kani, you go home thinking you'll go to your parents' home. Maike jate hai, aur maike mein ye hota hai. She was stripped, raped, her two-year-old child had his fingers cut off. Another younger sister, also 10 years old, was, I mean, uh, something like, yeah, 10-year-old daughter was killed, and her eight-year-old sister, managed to catch this baby and run away into the forest, which is why this Gompar baby is alive today. 
because this eight-year-old girl had the presence of mind to run away with her nephew. After that, they were all grabbed out of the house. Bajare Subi was stabbed, left by the Mahua tree. Kani was uh, raped, uh, stabbed, etc. A newly married couple, Soyam Subba and Soyam Jogi, were the others killed along with Madhvi Enka, whose house was surrounded by tall stalks of corn. So detail upon detail we have about how each one of them was killed. All the relatives have testified about how this happened, who was killed. And then what happened? When the case went to Supreme Court, um, so the villager said that they went and told Himanshu, who told them to come back with all the evidence, and then they came back and gave their testimonies. After filing the case, uh, so Samur and uh, Himanshu Ji will describe what happened. Uh, Prashant had also organized a meeting then. She was picked up and taken away. And the villagers were again kidnapped. So they were basically taken away by the police and produced just before the district magistrate. So all that time they were in police custody. And people are truthful. Something like this has happened. They know who has done it. The police always ask them, we've been through the whole CBI inquiry, so we know exactly how it happens. They say, where were you? They say, we were hiding in the forest near our house. Did you see who did it? Obviously, you can't say, I know the exact person who did it, but you know that the first came, you know who it was who did it. So they say, could not say who did it because they were hiding in the forest. Does that mean that people don't know who did it? I mean, do you have to be there if somebody comes into your house and a thief is murders your family members? Do you have to say, no, no, I murdered my own family members. My relatives murdered my family members. I mean, this is just beyond um, acceptance that not only are they kidnapping the people who are testifying? Where is the level playing field of the law? Where do they expect people who have suffered through this kind of you know, mass killing, mass burning of the houses, the rapes, the murders, and they expect them to say nothing happened, to give five lakhs fine? I have nothing to say for, to the Supreme Court. Our contempt case in the Supreme Court has been pending since 2012. They turn around and tell Tista and Zakia Jaffray, why did it take 16 years for you to struggle? And why were you wasting the court's time for 16 years? I want to know why the Supreme Court has been wasting our time for all these years and giving us judgments like this. And I want to know who is in contempt of whom because I certainly have no respect for a judgment like this.